Hi, my name is Kent C. Dodds, and I want to show you Remix Stacks. Particularly, in this video, we're going to look at the Indie Stack, which is deployed to a long-running Node.js server with a persistent SQLite database. And it's great for websites with dynamic data that you control, like blogs, marketing, content sites. And it's also perfect for low-complexity bootstrap for MVPs or prototypes and proofs of concept. Um, or proof of concepts <laughs> that can later be updated to the blue stack easily. So the blue stack is like the, the next level above the indie stack. So indie stack is awesome for just getting started with Remix or just like playing around with, with ideas and stuff. And then you can upgrade it easily to the blue stack. So the indie stack, this is how you get it started using npx create remix. And so we're going to open up our uh, terminal here and execute that. This is going to get us started with a Remix project. So I'm going to stick that just here in my directory, in my uh, desktop directory. We'll call this my one wheel blog. And yes, I do want to install uh, the dependencies. So I'll run npm install. And then after this npm install happens, we're going to automatically run the Remix init script, which is going to run a bunch of other things for us. So this is using SQLite, which is a file um, database. And so we're actually able to create that database for you automatically and get it all set up with the, the data that you uh, need to get you initialized. And so that's what starts at the very beginning. Once all the dependencies have been installed, uh, we set up Remix for Node. Uh, here, let's let's make this bigger so we can see all of that. Um, and then here we say we're running the uh, Remix init script to make sure everything is set up properly. Um, we create the uh, database file. We apply migrations to it so it has all the data that or the uh, tables and everything that we want. And uh, for the initial state of our app, we run the seed command so that we have some data in there just to test out. And then we make sure that the app has been installed successfully on your machine by running the linting, type checking, and the end-to-end -end tests. And, uh, and then we uh, go through all of that in, in parallel. The end-to-end -end tests also include running the build. So by the end of all of this, you should be really confident that your setup is ready to rock and roll for you to start working on stuff. So we're going to CD into the one wheel blog, and then I'm going to open up my favorite text editor, VS Code. And let's bump this up a little bit. We'll get our terminal up. And now uh, let's explore the code base a little bit. So uh, the Indie stack provides a ton of stuff for you. And the first place that you're going to want to go is the README, where you can read about the Indie stack. And actually, let's look at the rendered version of that just here in the GitHub repo. So this explains what's all in there. Uh, we've already run the setup. This was uh, run as part of the uh, project generation. And anybody who clones your repo uh, after you make all your changes or whatever, um, they'll just run the npm run setup script, and they'll get everything set up. Uh, the way that you have it as well. So uh, having all the tests and everything running, uh, which is cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll run the dev server, npm run dev. And this is going to start a couple of things for us. Uh, first, it's running uh, the Tailwind so that we can generate the Tailwind based on the classes that we're using in our code base. This is going to run uh, the Remix script to, to get Remix um, running in the background. And it also starts the mock service worker uh, so that we can mock out third-party APIs. And so if you start interacting with the uh, Stripe API, for example, and you don't actually want to hit this real Stripe API because you want to be able to work offline or something. We have MSW already all set up in here for you. So you can uh, bring in your REST endpoints from MSW so that you can um, stick in like a rest.get um, HTTPS my URL.com or whatever. And you can mock out what uh, responses your server is going to get from that. So that's all set up uh, for both your development time as well as your end-to-end -end tests. That's going to be configured for you. Uh, right here, it says that the app server started at localhost 3000. So let's pop that open. And here we are with the Indie stack. Let's go ahead and log in. And there is a uh, user that's already created for us as part of that seed script. So we can log in as Rachel at remix.run. And the password is Rachel rocks with an X because that's how much Rachel rocks. Uh, we'll turn on remember me, log in, and boom, we are logged in. We have some notes already in here for us. We can create a new note. This, uh, this is a great note. Hooray. 
ta-da, and save that. And then we can go to our first note and delete it. And so you, you've got um, basically a, a full model just for notes already set up for you. All the authentication is built for you and you're all set with all of these technologies. All right, with that, let's take a look at some of the other pieces of code that are relevant in here. So we have this models directory that has all of our interaction with the database. We have this DB server file that's responsible for connecting to the database. And this is using Prisma. So if you go into that, this is where we're creating our Prisma client in a way that's safe for development as well as production. And, uh, and then the models are responsible for interacting with that database for getting notes, getting note list items, creating notes, all that, uh, as well as finding the user by their ID or their email and so on and so forth. Um, that is used for authentication and then just getting the user's information. And so that's all the stuff that's going on in the models. Our session.server is responsible for uh, managing the uh, session cookies. Uh, the session is set in a cookie and we just set the user ID. And uh, that is signed by the secret so that we know that nobody's like making up their own cookies or whatever. And uh, yeah, and you get all of this code. So if you need to make any changes or anything, it's less than 100 lines of code that you can totally make changes to. It's a pretty lightweight abstraction. Your uh, root is right in here. Your entry client and server are pretty standard. For Remix apps, you've got your routes here. You have this health check route right here that is just a, a resource route that Fly, where we're gonna be deploying this to, will check uh, occasionally to make sure that your app is still up and running. And when you go to deploy it, it will uh, have to first pass this health check before it switches all traffic over to your newly deployed site. So that's all set up for you automatically and configured in your Fly Tumble here. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the basic setup for the routes. Uh, let's go ahead and get this all deployed uh, because we actually have deployment set up for you in this deploy.yaml uh, that has like all of the steps to make sure that everything's happy and we have deploying to staging and to production. But to get it deployed, we have to do a couple of things to integrate with uh, uh, Fly uh, so that we have an app that's ready for us to deploy. So I'm gonna uh, open up a new terminal window here and I'm gonna go to the readme. And actually when you created and, and generated this project, it actually updated the readme to have specific instructions for you. So from here on out, I'm actually just gonna use the readme right here because it's going to have some stuff specific to my project. So first thing we need to um, sign up for fly. So I'm gonna say fly off sign up and this is going to open a window right here. And I'm gonna say sign in as different user. And we can uh, sign up, create a brand new account. I already have an account, so I'm going to say have an account. And we're going to use the hello at remix.run. So we'll sign in. And that is going to give uh, access to fly locally on my machine to um, the ability to create tokens and stuff like that that we're gonna need here in a little bit. Um, and of course you are gonna need to have Fly installed, so make sure that you follow in the instructions to get Fly installed for your machine. So that ends up being something as simple as a, a brew install if you're on a Mac uh, or even curl. Uh, and then there's uh, other stuff for uh, whatever platforms you're on. So just follow those instructions, get it installed, and then Fly uh, auth sign up. So with Fly, uh, initialized on your machine, you can now create apps. And we have two apps for Fly because we have a production environment and a staging environment. So we're going to create both of those. We're gonna do basically the same thing for each. So uh, here it's going to ask me which organization I wanna use. It may not ask you this question if you're just a brand new user. And by the way, all of this, even though Fly does ask you for a credit card, uh, the setup instructions in the Indie stack um, is completely free. Everything that you're doing in here is within their free tier. So um, I'm gonna choose Remix, uh, the, the Remix um, org, and then we're going to uh, set up or create another, um, another app here. So I'm gonna say Remix again. So we ha now have two apps, one for staging, one for production. Great, so now we're gonna create a GitHub repo. So I'm gonna say repo.new, repo.new. Uh, this will take me to the GitHub uh, repo creation uh, page. And here I'll just say uh, testing or one wheel blog. There we go. Testing the Remix Indie stack. And we'll make it public and we'll say create repository. Cool. And with that created now, 
I can add a fly API token to the GitHub repo. So to do this, we go to our user settings um, in fly. And we're going to create a new token. So this is going to be the one wheel blog uh, deployment token. And we'll create that. And don't try to use this because as soon as I'm done recording this video, I'm going to invalidate this token. <laughs> um, but with that now, I can go to my settings of the repo that I'm going to de uh, be deploying this from and secrets and actions. And we'll make a new repository secret. We'll paste that value in there and we'll grab the fly API token for the name of the secret. We'll add that secret now and we'll move on to the next step. So uh, part of the authentication process is signing the token and you don't want the uh, secret that or the session secret that you use to sign the token to be public. And so that's going to be one of the environment variables that you set uh, uh, as part of both of your fly apps, both the staging as well as production. And so here we're using OpenSSL to generate a random 32 um, character string. Uh, if you don't have OpenSSL installed, you can use the one password generator. But that's what we're going to do is the OpenSSL. So we'll just copy both of those. We'll hit paste uh, and it will run this. And it's going to say uh, first um, that the secrets are staged for the first deployment. Since we haven't deployed anything, it's not normally when you set a secret, it's going to redeploy with that secret, but we haven't deployed anything yet. So it just gets it ready for our first deployment, which is exactly what we want. And the second thing that it says here is it's uh, saying, hey, um, app flag one wheel blog 9420 staging does not match app name and config file. So we do have a config file in this project if you look at the fly.toml. And at the top, our app is the production app. And here we're trying to execute a command for the staging app. And fly is just saying, hey, I noticed that you've got a config here, but you're trying to run a script for a different app. Are you sure? And we're just going to say, yes, we're sure, because we just want to set up the staging environment as well. So secrets are staged for the first deployment. So that's awesome. Let's move on to the next step which is to create a persistent volume for the SQLite database. So we do have a database. It is a file. We need to have a persistent volume or uh, just a, a place where we can keep that file as we're deploying. So it's kind of sitting alongside our app and we can deploy new apps and they can still point to that, ex same, that exact same file. So each uh, environment is going to have its own version of this file. And so we're going to create a volume for both of these. And this is going to create a volume called data with a size of one gigabyte. Uh, and they're going to be at both of these places. So we'll run that to uh, set that up. And we do have to decide, OK, what region do we want this volume to be set in? And uh, I'm just going to use the one that's closest to me. And that's the, the default. Is it, it shows you the one that's closest to you. So we're going to say Dallas, Texas for this one. And then again, it's going to ask us uh, if what region we want for the other one uh, for the staging volume. And so we'll just say Dallas, Texas for that one too. Feel free to choose whatever region is closest to you. It, it won't make a difference. Uh, okay, so now with everything set up, we should be re ready to deploy to main. So let's get init to create our repository. Uh, we'll get status to see what we're at. Okay, get add everything and commit this as init. And let's just double check. Yep, everything is good to go. So now all we have to do is connect our repo, uh, our remote repo on GitHub with our local repo here, which is what we get right here. And we'll just copy that, paste it right there. And now it's up on our repo. If we refresh right here, we're going to see all of the stuff uh, that we just pushed. We'll go to our actions. And because we have a GitHub action already pre-configured for us, this is going to start the GitHub action. This will only take a couple of minutes and it will actually be faster next time because we'll have some caching in place with the build. But what we have here is we'll run the linting, the type uh, checking, the testing with vtest and the testing with Cypress all at the same time as the build. And so it all can run in parallel and run really quite quickly. So let's take a look while we're waiting for this at the testing uh, setup with vtest and Cypress. So vtest is configured in this vtest.config right here. You can um, add whatever plugins or, or set up whatever config that you like. And we have one test as an example for you if you look in the app file under utils.test. And this is just testing our validate email utility that we have in our utils file. For our Cypress tests, 
we have those in the E to E directory under smoke. And for this, we have one test that uh, goes through the register and login flow and another test that uh, goes through the making a note. But we've already done the login and register. So this one, um, and, and you have to be logged in to be able to make a note. So what this one does is it runs the special sci.login command, which is uh, already set up for us in this support directory. If you look at the commands file, um, we have the sci login command that creates a new user, logs in as that user, and sets the cookie for you. So you can um, do the sci login and do whatever authenticated test that you need to. So it's all set up for you, and we have examples in here uh, for you so that you can go ahead and delete the notes part of the app, add your own uh, changes, whatever you need to do, and uh, feel free to, to use the sci login to get your user logged in so that you can write all of those tests. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that gets everything set up, and we also will clean up each user between every test so that you can keep your database in a clean state. So uh, that is the testing setup that we've got. I also want to show you the Prisma setup that we've got. So from the, the get-go, you have uh, your SQLite database set up here. We're using the Prisma client JS. And then we've got our user model. And our password model is separate from the user model, so you don't accidentally send password hashes to the client. And then we have our note model. Now, of course, you're going to have your own models that you'll put into here. You might change the user model. And so you'll go and look up in the Prisma documentation how to make these changes and, and do these migrations so you can add additional migrations um, on top of creating the, these tables and stuff like that. So this is just a really good place for you to get started. OK, so with that all said, we've got our linting, TypeScript, uh, vtest, and Cypress all finished. The build should be finished in a little bit. The build is actually running a uh, Docker build. So we're putting this into a Docker container for Fly to deploy. And so our Docker file, uh, you can take a look at this and make any modifications that you like if you, um, if you want to. But it works out pretty well. Uh, and we do have a Docker ignore file, so we're not just sending gigabytes up to uh, the Fly registry. And with that, it looks like it's almost finished and almost ready to deploy. Um, one thing that's uh, that we do that's interesting in here is um, we actually create the Docker file. We cache the different uh, Docker layers so that this can be really fast. And then we upload uh, the, the finished file to the Fly registry. So then our deployment step can just say, hey, that thing I just uploaded to the Fly registry, I want you to deploy that. And so that's what's going on with this uh, Fly auth right here, as well as um, the, the part of the, the Docker build and, and moving cache uh, piece is all part of that to make this really uh, as fast as it possibly can be when you're dealing with um, deploying a Docker container. So now we are uh, running the deploy script. This, um, of course, has got to check out the repo and, and stuff. We're going to read the app name from the fly toml so that we can uh, deploy to the right app. Uh, and because we are on the main branch, we're actually deploying to production. Uh, what I can do here while we're waiting for that to happen is I'm going to uh, check out a new branch called dev. And we're going to just push this. And so we can watch the dev branch will deploy to staging. So if we go to actions, we'll see we have our init running there. And for this one, this will deploy to our staging environment. So you can work on the dev branch. And then um, as you are confident and ready to ship stuff, you can merge dev branch into main and then work on the dev branch some more, ship, uh, put it into main. And every time something gets into main, you get a deploy. Uh, OK, so sweet. We have finished. We have successfully deployed our app to production. And um, we can go to our fly toml where we have our app right here. Copy that. Go that.fly.dev. And here's our app in production. Uh, all of this, if you didn't do the talking that I just did, this should take you about five minutes or less to uh, go from absolutely nothing to an app in production that has authentication and database and everything uh, so that nothing stands between your brilliant idea and uh, getting into production. So with that, we hope that you love the Indie Stack. We hope that it's helpful to you and that you can get all of your amazing ideas out the door. Enjoy the Indie Stack, and we'll see you around the internet.